So, like I said, the pathway of the planets, Venus, Mercury, the Sun, the Moon, all goes through the same part of the sky. It's called the ecliptic. They never go up to the north, they never go down to the south, they're always right along the east-west line of the ecliptic. Because of the way the solar system is made, in a disk, right? But the Milky Way goes almost 90 degrees to it. And so this is the way that they cross. And this photograph is, how, is where the sun will be in 2012 on December 21st. Uh, a day or two earlier, it'll be here. A couple days earlier, it'll be over here. A couple days later, it'll be over here. The sun moves across the sky one degree every day. 365 days in a year, 360 degrees in a, in, a, in, in a circle, right? So the sun moves around. In any case, this crossing is represented by these guys holding serpent bars, right? They've got the bar across their chest. They're vertical. They're the Milky Way. The serpent bar is the ecliptic. And some of these actually show, let's see. Oh, excuse me. I just had to stick this in. Isn't that a beautiful Milky Way photo? This is looking out of a cave in Arizona in uh, Monument Valley. That's the, what they call the dark rift in the Milky Way. It's actually, this dark rift is not a hole. It's actually clouds makes that dark spot. But that's... The, the Milky Way is sometimes thought of as a crocodile because it looks like that's the mouth of a crocodile. It's one of the reasons they paint the creature. Anyway, this guy's holding a Stella. This Stella, there's, his, his bar is held at an angle. His belt and his bar are both marked with star signs. This is the word for star. This is the word for sun. This is the word for sky. This is the word for darkness. So he's got all these sky marks on his snake and on his belt. Here's another guy holding the bar. There's a drawing and a photograph of, this, of Naranjo Stella holding it at an angle. And the angle is 60 degrees, the same as the same as the sky crossing. Does that make sense? I think this is deliberate. Come on, there we go. Yes? In this case, though, they're not holding it on their fingertips. That's true. It looks like they're engrossed, you know. Okay, this one he's holding in that crab claw gesture. This one, you're right. I'm not sure if his fingers are supposed to be, you know, carefully holding away from it or if he's actually holding it. But he doesn't seem to be gripping it with his fingers. This guy, his hands are close to it. His little fingers are not touching. Maybe that's all you need to, to not touch is a little finger. <laughs> that's a really good, that's a really good observation. I'm not sure what's going on with the, the diagonal ones. Maybe they, maybe they can't hold it with a crab claw gesture if it's at an angle. It slips out or something. In any case, I believe that what's going on with this thing being held at an angle is the king is the Milky Way and the bar is the ecliptic, and that the angle is matching that in the sky. Cool, huh? Um, one of the big problems that I have with the futuristic prophecies about the end of the Maya calendar is that they say, we understand what the Maya believed. We understand what they were prophesying. And they don't. Nobody does. <laughs> we have some guesses, like you pointed out. You know, I know a little, a little more than most people, but I, you know, we still know very little. Speculation. This is what's that? It's speculation. It's speculation, exactly. Um, the tree can be a mother. It can be a, something that feeds you. It could be something that holds up the sky. It can indicate the homeland, and it can be a national symbol. There's all different interpretations of this tree, and there's all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, be careful about projecting your own ideas onto somebody else's culture, right? Um, and remember, I mentioned that the Maya didn't have a scripture that was the word of God. It's almost unimaginable to, to, to switch the roles of Adam and Eve. You know, what if Adam was the one who sinned and Eve was the one who said, no way, you know? You think that's what happened? I think, I think that's something we should think about. Uh, or the idea that Jesus fathered children. That was the whole basis for the Da Vinci Code, right? Think, remember the ruckus that happened? Oh, you're violating the Bible. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, that's because the Bible, to most of us, is the word of God. It's inerrant. It's not... You know, there's, there's no way we can, vi we can change a bit of it. The Maya didn't believe that. Abraham's sacrifice is something that is in the Bible, right? Abraham was told by God to take his son up to the mountaintop and kill him. God said, I like my son. Do I have to do it? And God said, yes. So he went up there and God saved him at the last minute. The angel grabbed his hand and gave him a ram to sacrifice instead, right? You all know this story. What was his son's name? Isaac. Isaac. Any Muslims in the room? Ask a Muslim. Ishmael. Ishmael was the son that Abraham was about to kill according to the myth as told by the Muslims because Ishmael is the father of the Arab race. Isaac is the father 
of the Jewish race. And so the Jews say that it was Isaac, and the Arabs say it was Ishmael. Which one's right? They're both right, of course. <laughs> They're both right. I mean, that the story is a story. It's a myth. It's, a, it's, 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 a, it's the kind of thing that you see all the time. This kind of divergence you see in all sorts of mythical traditions. Just not so much in the Christian. Yes? I was down at Tulum, down in Japan earlier this year. Yeah. And our Mayan guide told me that the Mayan calendar had 17 months, and one month was five days, and all of the children born during those five days, when they reached puberty, were sacrificed to the gods. Wow, what a cool story. Right. <laughs> First of all, I'm not sure if he... If he get, that's entirely possible. That that was true of one time and one place. I haven't seen any support for the idea that children born during Wyab is the five-day month. By the way, Wyab is the 19th, not the 17th month. Maybe he told you wrong. Maybe you don't remember. Yeah, there's 18 months plus one five-day month. But anyway, the point is this. Um, you know, he didn't remember it exactly. And he was telling stories that get some bigger tips. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I always worry about the guys that want tips. Yes. There's, uh, I have four little YouTube videos, by the way. You can type my name into YouTube and you'll get four little lectures that I give about, about the Maya culture. And I'm going to add a link to this one as well. We're going to edit this down. I hope you don't mind. It's a little bit long. Cut it into four pieces. But I do want to put it on YouTube. Anyway, the point is this. The Maya shifted things around a lot. Remember the, oh, here's the guy cutting the uh, world tree with a rodent tooth. And this guy's got a tool with metal tools, with metal, metal cutting. But this is a tree. Um, this is a birth myth. This is the creation myth of the Mishtex. It was painted about 1500. It shows a tree being split open. These guys are carving this tree. The bottom of the tree is not a crocodile in this case, but a woman. She's drinking from the earth at a place we know as Apuala. This little symbol represents the, the town of Apuala, which is in Oaxaca. The tree is split open. Out comes a naked man painted red, a naked woman painted yellow, with no name, no clothes. Their children, on the other hand, have names and clothes. You see that? And they have 52 children. That poor woman. In any case, um, these are the Adam and Eve of the Mishtex, and they're born from a tree. And the tree's real interesting. You see this side of the tree? Those circles are spindle whorls. It's things you use to spin to make, to make wool into thread. This are arrows. Whose job is it to shoot arrows? Men. Whose job is it to spin? This is a male-female tree. This is a tree of birth. And this tree here is, what, pink and blue. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> this is the same kind of man-woman tree. And it's got a crocodile sucking the earth. And out of it is a man chopping himself. So we have a creation myth of the god named Chuck chopping himself out of the tree. And another, and, but this is, Maya, this is a Maya painting, by the way. And this is a Mishtek painting of two guys chopping a tree. And they both have seven in there. Seven eagle and seven rain are the name of these two guys dressed in black. And they're creating the Mishtek race, or at least the race that uh, the, the fa father and mother of the race, by cutting the tree open for them. And this is a Saba tree. It's got spikes in the bulging pregnant belly. This one does not have spikes, but it does have little curly marks that represent stones. This is a stone tree. And this text, by the way, da -da 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 it ends with the date for a how ate kumku. That's that creation date. It's somehow related to the creation of the world, this guy chopping himself out of the uh, tree. It, by the way, he's not mentioned in this text. What is mentioned are days, months, years, 20-year periods, 400-year um, periods, and 8,000-year periods. It says the creation of the 8,000-year period. They're talking about making time itself. It's a very interesting text, which we really don't understand very well. Anyway, as you see, the guy with the crocodile is a similar thing. There's a crocodile's mouth there, a crocodile's mouth there. Come on. This is... Um, 500 AD. This is a woman uh, called the great goddess of Teotihuacan. She's dripping wealth from her fingertips. There's two guys also pouring things out. They're, they're, they're creating abundance. Out of her head, which has this owl headdress and lots of these green quetzal feathers. Remember, the quetzal is a sacred bird that uh, represents life because its tail feathers are the same shape as leaves of corn. <laughs>